Good morning and welcome to the uh, Monday morning devotional here at Faith Presbyterian Church. Um, well, thank you for those who are, are praying for us uh, with, with uh, whatever sickness has gone through our house. Um, I mean, it's nothing serious. It's, the, the symptoms aren't serious. It's just uh, lots of uh, congestion and, and a couple of kids have a, or have had a cough. Uh, this morning, it seemed like everybody's feeling a little bit better. Um, but we're waiting for the uh, COVID test results to come back. Uh, we did the, uh, the PCR, which is the longer uh, test. And so we're waiting for that to come back. Hopefully, maybe uh, tomorrow or Wednesday, we'll hear something. Um, but as soon as we do, we'll let, we'll let everybody know um, how the test results uh, went. Uh, but in the meantime, let's jump into Revelation chapter 11. I, I'm thankful for, uh, for, for Mike Rasmussen to come, who came and preached on short notice yesterday. He did a wonderful job. And, uh, and what a great, great group of elders we have who just stepped in and uh, picked up the ball and, and kept running with it. So um, thank you for all the guys, for, uh, for Matthew, Steve, Mark, and Alan, who, um, who did a wonderful job yesterday morning. Thank you, guys. So, uh, well, if you have your Bible, let's go to Revelation chapter 11, and let's look at this very complicated vision and see if, I can, see if we can do something with it, with the, with the 10 or 12 minutes that we have in these, in these brief devotionals. Because, uh, I mean, this, in, in my opinion, for me... Um, and, and I've studied the book of Revelation uh, quite a bit. Um, for me, Revelation chapter 11 is one of the most uh, mysterious chapters in, in the whole in, in the whole book. Um, I, uh, there, and, and, and many scholars will, uh, wrestle with it. I'm not, I'm, not the, I'm not just the only one. Many New Testament scholars will look at Revelation 11 um, and go, "Man, I don't. What do you do with this?" Uh, in fact, there's. Let's see. I, I counted earlier. Uh, one, two, three, four by six different views uh, of this chapter alone. Um, and so uh, so we're, what we're going to do is, is we're going to take a we're going to take the bird's eye view of everything. We're, we're going to take the 747 30,000 feet cruising altitude view of Revelation chapter 11. Um, and, and we're not going to dive into the the, um, uh, the the minute details so much, but we're going to just just take a, a, a big grand overall look at the book, Revelation 11 this morning. So um, enough talk. Let's just jump right into it. So Revelation chapter 11, and I'm going to read the whole chapter, okay? So Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. Then I was given a measuring rod like a staff, and I was told, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship there. But do not measure the court outside the temple. Leave that out, for it is given over to the nations. They will trample the holy city for 42 months, and I will grant authority to my witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone would harm them, fire pours from their mouth and consumes their foes. If anyone would harm them, this is how he is doomed to be killed. They have the power to shut the sky, they, that no rain may fall during the days of their prophesying. And they have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague so often as they desire. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that rises from the bottomless pit will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. And their bodies will lie in the street of the great city that, that symbolically is called Sodom and Egypt, where their Lord was crucified for three and a half days. Some from the peoples and tribes and languages and nations will gaze at their bodies and refuse to let them be placed in a tomb. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and make merry and exchange presents, because these two prophets have been a torment to those who dwell on the earth. But after the three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them, and they stood up on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies watched them. And at that hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake, and the rest were terrified and gave glory to God of heaven. The second woe has passed. Behold, the third woe is soon to come. Okay, so we're leading up to, let's see, Revelation chapter 12, which is the seventh trumpet. We're leading up to, we're leading up to the seventh trumpet. And what I, I'm proposing here is, is that Revelation 11 happens within the events of the six trumpets, okay? So this is sort of the, again, we're, we're still in the uh, deep breath before the plunge. We're, we're in the deep breath before we see the return of Jesus, um, which comes in, this, in the seventh trumpet uh, in, in Revelation 11, verses 15 
uh, to 19. Okay, so what we're seeing in Revelation 11 is uh, is is the, uh, the the perpetuity of again the perpetuity of human history leading up to the return of Jesus. And so when, when we read things like two witnesses and and uh, uh, the, the 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 courts of the temple um, and the beast from the bottomless pit, we are not to read these literally. Um, we are to read them literalistically. <laughs> But we're not to read them literally. These aren't literally two guys that you see in some of these, like uh, some of these, some of these movies that were that have been put out there, like uh, Left Behind and, and other movies that were put out there. Um, these aren't literally two men who stand in the streets of Jerusalem prophesying, and, and then they're killed and then they're resurrected. Um, these two witnesses represent the church. These two w witnesses represent the church in that notice notice that, that they're uh, they're identified as the two lampstands, the two olive trees verse 4 these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the lord of the earth and this is throughout the book of revelation the two olive trees the two lampstands two witnesses um th this this is always a representation of the church itself in its ministry to proclaim the gospel that's what they're doing and, and why too well because according to old testament law according to levitical law in order for any testimony to be substantiated and to be proven there had to be two witnesses and so, uh, in other words, what we're seeing is we're seeing the church on the earth before the return of Jesus being witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. So that's, 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 that's one part of the vision that we see. Again, the details make it sound complicated, but it's but once you start digging into the, into the details and start interpreting the Old Testament imagery that John is using, it becomes less complicated. All right. Even the numbers like... Uh, um, 1,260 days, 42 months. Um, these are all numbers that remind us of the life of Elijah. Elijah's ministry of judgment, I believe, was 42 day, for, was for 42 months. So, in other words, um, the church, they are uh, ministering in the same way that Elijah ministered, in that the church is a prophetic witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ, on the earth to proclaim the good news, but even in the proclamation of good news, there's a proclamation of judgment. That judgment is coming. That salvation has come and judgment is coming. Salvation is coming for those who hope in Christ, but judgment is coming upon those who reject Christ. And then look at and then notice the uh, the, uh, the the persecution of the church here. Um, they uh, the, the they are they are literally killed in the streets. Um, and then, and then the world rejoices. I mean, isn't that what Jesus told his disciples? He says in, in the book of John, Jesus says, look guys, you know, the world's going to persecute you, but know that they hated me before they hated you. The world's going to hate you. They're going to laugh and scoff at you, um, on, on account of me. And so uh, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be, uh, you're going to be ostracized. You're going to be kicked outside the bounds of society. You're going to be, you're going to be thought of as, as, as crazy, but but fear not. I've given you the power of the word. I've given you the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, that's what all this, look at this. They have, verse six, they have power to shut the sky. No rain may fall during the days that they're prophesying. Um, they, they can call down every kind of plague. Again, once again, this is not a, it's not a literal thing. It's not like the church has the power to do these things like, like, like magic, but, but this is um, the power of the gospel that's within them. That, that, that the Lord is, is, is defending them, the Lord is upholding them, the Lord is, is filling them with his power and might so that, they, so that they may proclaim the gospel. Once again, um, this is a vision of what the church is to do on planet Earth before uh, leading up to the return of Jesus. That, that we as the witnesses of Christ, we as, as those who have, a, who have a prophetic message of the gospel, are to stand firm in Christ and preach the gospel no matter what happens to us, knowing that the world will hate us, the world will ridicule, ridicule us, the world will even seek to kill us. But, but once again, God has marked us out for his own people. God has secured us in him so that even if we are killed physically, we will be in him forever, um, resurrected in, in, in Christ when he returns. Notice the very beginning of, of chapter 11. Look at this. Uh, John's told, he says, then I was given a measuring rod, like a staff, and I was told, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship there. But do not measure the court outside the temple. Leave that out, for it is given over to the nations, and they will trample the holy city for 42 months. 
and I will grant authority to my witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. Notice, the, notice verse 1, rise and measure the temple of God. Well, the temple of God throughout the book of Revelation is symbolic of God's people, safe and secure in God. In fact, um, to measure something uh, throughout the Bible uh, in, in, in a sort of in a prophetic vision, was was not uh, to, to 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 see literally how big something was, um, like in Ezekiel when Ezekiel was told to, to to measure the city, to measure something uh, in prophetic language or an apocalyptic prophetic language, was symbolic of saying, uh, look how look how strong and secure my people are in God. Now measure that. Look at this. You know. So like at the end of the book of Revelation, when when we get a vision of of the, uh, the the new city and the new temple coming down from heaven, um, that's not a literal city and a literal temple. It is it is a, a symbolic language describing God's people that they are secure in God, that they are measured, that there's no one lost um, outside of God's power and God's sovereign might. I, um, it reminds me of uh, I think John John six. Where Jesus says, all that the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never lose them, and I will raise them up in the last days. So this is what we're seeing here, that, 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 that we are secure. No matter what happens on planet Earth to, to God's people, we are secure in God. And our, our purpose on this earth is to be a witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it is a powerful message because it is the Holy Spirit, it is God himself who gives power to the message because of what the message actually is. Good news and judgment. And no matter what happens to us, we are to never cease proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because Revelation eleven fifteen is coming. Listen to this. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. Why? Because the two witnesses, a.k.a. the church, stood on planet Earth and proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ, awaiting their Lord and Savior. And then in Revelation 11, verse 15, we see the coming of the Lord um, to set up his new kingdom as we are here to proclaim the kingdom of the good news of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much um, for giving us the gospel who that that uh, that gives us peace and comfort and joy, knowing that we are secure in you. God, never, 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 ever, oh God, uh, let us forget our mission to proclaim the good news of your Son Jesus Christ to the nations, to our neighbors, to our co-workers, to our family members. Father, it is our prayer that you keep us vigilant. Vigilant to share the good news of, your, of the gospel. And I want to sing to ask your son's precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, if you need anything, please email me, text me, or call me. Uh, let me know. And uh, in the meantime, may the Lord God bless you. And I hope to see you soon. God bless.